you will turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 14. And I'm only going to be reading one verse, verse 6, John chapter 14. After church last week, we headed down to Orlando to see my son Sam, and we went to Hollywood Disneyland, an adventure itself. And we went through the gates, and here is the first thing that I got, a map. Because you've got to know where to go if you want to go to Star Wars land, which is where I wanted to go. And of course, you've got the Frozen land named after the movie, and the Toy Story, and the car, you know, there's one about a car or something. So we went to all this, plus you've got to know where to eat. And you've got to know where the bathroom is. You've got to have a guide. You've got to know the way. Well, when we come to the Bible, the Bible is our God. And the Bible tells us who Jesus Christ is. And the Gospel of John was written so people may believe. Now, over Christmas, it tells us specifically who this Jesus Christ was in John chapter 1. What we're going to do now is to look at the rest of John's Gospel, focusing in on the I Am statements of Jesus Christ, where he says, I am. And then he defines who he is. And this morning, in John chapter 14, 6, listen to what God's word says. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let's pray and ask God to bless his word. Our Heavenly Father, we ask you will help us to understand this sentence that Jesus told his disciples. We pray that it will become part of our lives and we will have confidence in who Jesus Christ is. Our souls will have rest because of Jesus. Hear our prayer. Amen. As a preacher, there are lots of topics that I can cover. There are the Ten Commandments, where I can preach a sermon on each one of those. There are the prophecies of the Old and New Testaments. I can focus on those for quite a while. We have biblical heroes that are worthy of sermon series. And there are stories and psalms, which I could expound. But I think at the end of the day, what most people want to hear is about Jesus. Who is Jesus? Now, one time I had a chronological Bible, and I remember starting in Genesis, and you would read consecutively on through, and that's a good habit. But I noticed after a while, after getting stuck in Leviticus for a while, I felt, I just want to hear something about Jesus. And I imagine that's exactly what you feel as well. Tell us about Jesus. Well, that's what I want to do this morning. Tell you about Jesus. Tell you about our Savior, because he is the founder of our faith. He is the one that we worship. He is the one who instructs us on how we're to, to live. He is the one who clarifies what the Old Testament is about. Of course, he is the one who has prepared a way for us so that we can go to the new heavens and the new earth. Let's now dwell on the words that he spoke to his disciples, which tell us exactly who he is. They're called the I Am statements. There are seven of them. And Jesus, with these I am statements, defines who he is and what he does. We get a clear picture of Jesus Christ through the words that he spoke to his disciples. And the Spirit's purpose in John chapter 14, 6, is to give the readers of the Bible confidence that he is the one way to God. 
as it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I got to think. In the background of those verses, there's a lot of uncertainty amongst the disciples. Why do you say is there uncertainty after all? They've been with Jesus. They witnessed his miracles. Well, I'll tell you why there was uncertainty. It was over their expectations of who Jesus was. And in John chapter 13 and 14, for instance, we have the upper room where Jesus is making that turn towards the cross. And he is gathered with his disciples in the upper room for the Passover feast where they were celebrating what God had done in the past. And all the disciples were there, eating and drinking. And probably Peter was there complaining about the taxes that were placed upon him. James and John, known as the sons of thunder, they were reciting over how they bullied somebody in their youth. And there were some who probably were more in a holy disposition of mind since it was a religious feast. And what does Jesus start to do? He starts to wash his disciples' feet. Now that was unsettling. Let me tell you why it was unsettling. Jesus is the rabbi. He is the master. Washing someone's feet is what a servant does. No one wants to wash somebody's stinky feet. You give that to the lowest of the low. But Jesus does this. It's to remind them he's a servant. He is the one who's going to go to the cross for them as a servant. And then it says in chapter 13, verse 21, that Jesus is troubled. Why is he troubled? Because someone is going to betray him. Judas, the master, who should not be touched by evil, is going to be betrayed by one of his own disciples. And finally, Jesus tells him, I'm going away. And all of a sudden, the disciples are saying, huh? Uh, what are you talking about, Jesus? You're going to be with us, aren't you? No. I'm leaving. I'm going away. I'm going to the cross. And Peter says, Lord, this can't be. I'm willing to die with you. And Jesus said, really, Peter? You're really willing to do that for me? And finally, we get down to verse 5, where Thomas, the Debbie Downer of the group, the Eeyore, of the disciples, once again, ask that question, where are you going, Lord? Where are you going? He doesn't know. There is confusion amongst the disciples on this high and holy day, really over what is the purpose of Jesus' ministry. Was he not supposed to lead us in victory and overthrow the, the Romans and the Herodians? Wasn't he here to restore Israel? But Jesus gives every indication. He's going to the cross. And his disciples are confused. And I would say today that amongst many people, there is a lot of confusion about who Jesus Christ really is. There are some who would say, well, he's just a good person. Others would say he's a good moral teacher. Maybe some would say he's a social activist who came to this world to help the poor. Or he's a psychologist. But the way to God? Uh, people would say, I, I don't know about that. I don't know. And you ask the person on the street, what do you believe about Jesus? Well, one of the great religious teachers today is up there with Buddha, Confucius, Allah, Muhammad, all of those. He's just one option. 
that we can follow. And what about you who have been in the church for years? At times, when you listen to what's going on in the news and you think of this big world, maybe there are times when you doubt that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. We all have it. But listen to what Jesus is saying. <clears throat> what is the point that he's trying to make? He is saying, wait a minute. Wait a minute, world. Wait a minute, disciples. Here's what you've got to understand. I'm the only way. And listen to those words closely. He starts out with two simple words. I am. Where have we heard that? Go back to Exodus. When Moses was asking God, what is your name so I can tell the Hebrews who you are? What did God say? I am what I am. And if Israel needed a Savior, God says, I am your Savior. If they need a deliverer, I am your deliverer. That is where that comes from. And what Jesus is doing here in this I am statement is giving hints of his own divinity by tracing it back to Exodus. That he is Yahweh, which means I am in Hebrew. And then he goes on to say something else here. He goes, I am the way. It is in response to Thomas's question who asked, where do you go? Jesus says, I am the way to the Heavenly Father, which is where I am going. I am the way in God's presence. I am the path that you must take and get to God. And in Hebrews it says, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20, he is the new and living way. Now I've got to tell you, people have come up with various ways to God. There's the way of works, where you do enough good, hopefully in the balance scales, your good works will outweigh your bad works. And God will say, I like that person, come on up to heaven. There is the way of enlightenment, where if you meditate enough and have good and pleasant thoughts, you're one of God's. There is the way of social do-goodism, where you will be smiled upon if you help the poor and the outcast. But none of those talks about Jesus as the way. And here, God doesn't give the world a light principle to follow. He doesn't give them a, a logical argument. He doesn't give them philosophy. He doesn't give them a psychological gimmick. God sent a person as the way. Jesus, who is God and man. I didn't come up with this, but another person said it. God didn't give us a perfect argument to defend himself with. He sent his one and only Son, a living being, into this world to redeem us and make a way for us to go to God. And Jesus even tells us more. He's not only the way into the presence of God, it also says he is true. He's the true way, you could say. Jesus doesn't lie. All of Christianity is built, built on telling the truth. Jesus truly represents God's will. And when it talks about life, eternal life, God the Father wears that down in Jesus Christ, who is the way to God. And he ends it all with this statement, there is no other way. Now i got to tell you, that's an exclusive claim. At that point, Jesus rules out any other way to God. He rules out any other religion. He's saying you can't get to heaven, you can't get to God 
by your own works. You're not going to get there by following Islam. You're not going to get there by being a Hindu. You're not going to get there by reincarnation. You're not going to get there by becoming, by becoming one with the one. None of that. The only way to God is through Christ and Christ alone. There was a famous preacher in America. His name was Stephen Olver. And his father was a missionary in Africa. And his father went into an African village and they warmly received his father. And his father wanted to know, are there other villages where I can go where I'll get the same type of reception? And the chief said, sure. And I'll even send you a person who will take you to those other villages. And so he did. Well, after about three hours of traveling, Stephen Olford's father was beginning to wonder does this guy really know the way? He turned to the African tribesman and asked him that question. And the African said, yes, I know the way. You see these branches that have been broken? I did that. Do you see this axe that I have in my hand? I am the one who made this way. And do you see these, these wounds I have on my arm? That came because I was the one who was blazing this trail. And he stood up in his full height. He said, I am the way, follow me. Well, that's exactly what Jesus is telling his disciples. <clears throat> follow me. John Calvin, the Genevan reformer, put it this way. He said, anybody who tells you that there's another way to God besides Christ is misleading you and is foolish. The point of what Jesus is saying by his words is, want to come to God, you've got to rely on me. Thomas Kempis uh, was a medieval theologian. He came up with the following poem. Follow by me, I am the way and the truth and the life. Without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. And without life, there is no living. What did Jesus say? I am the way, truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now I know what you're thinking. Some of you may have objections. You've had your basic world history course in high school, and you covered the great religions, or you had religion 101 at the college that you attended or the university. And they're going to tell you, well, all religions are really alike. They're all the same. Underlying that question is a flattening of the world by making everything equal. But I got to tell you, all religions are not equal. They're not the same. Christianity is monotheistic. Hinduism is polytheistic. You got like three million gods. Some religions say, do good and you get to heaven. Like Islam, where God has a scale, and if your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, you're in. Some religions, such as Buddhism, traditionally were atheistic. Confucianism really isn't a religion at all. It's just how to live life. They're not all the same. Christianity believes Jesus is God. Islam does not. And Islam came along way after Christianity. In fact, it sort of copied the Christian and Jewish Bible. They are not all the same. And let me tell you why you should believe there's one way and not in many ways. I can tell you personally in my own life what Jesus Christ is the way means. I know what he did with a poor boy from Colonial Heights, Virginia, who was sitting in bed thinking to himself after an uncle's death, what does happen to a person? And I remember hearing a sermon on Psalm 23 that gave me the answer to that question. I can tell you about the need for grace because if you look out the world, we're all messed up. And everybody's a 
sinner and everybody falls short. I can tell you about that. I can tell you about the comfort that comes from knowing that there is a heavenly father, not some far off deity or an angry God. This fourth people, I can tell you all of that. Because it's all true. That's why I believe, and that's why I don't regard all these other religions as equal with Christianity. It all comes down to this. God sent his son into this world. Islam doesn't believe that. Other religions don't have that. God cared so much. He gave us the person. Well, some of you may still be thinking, well, isn't that awfully arrogant of you to think there's only one way? Well, let me ask you this question. Do you think Jesus was arrogant? No. And yet Jesus is the one who's saying, look, there's only one way to God, and it's through me. And anyone in this church who believes in Jesus Christ, who believes their one way to God, should be the humblest person in the world. Because remember, you didn't believe because you were good. You believed because God did something in your life, changed you, and redeemed you, and renewed you. That's why you believed. It wasn't up to you and your goodness. It wasn't because you were smarter than anyone. It's all because of God's grace. And that should keep us from being arrogant about it. So as we go into this new year, what does this mean for you? First, we need to have a feeling of confidence in what we believe. In today's world, the belief of one way to heaven is considered arrogant. We live in a world where we want to take into account other views. But let me just tell you this. The idea that all religions are equal, that's a Western idea. Tell it to the person in the Middle East. See what he thinks of that idea. That there are many ways to God. They wouldn't believe it. No. Our comfort should come from the fact of what Jesus says. And if we are struggling with that, things that we need to do is to ask the Holy Spirit to minister to us, to comfort our hearts so that we rest in the truth of God's revelation and always go back to what Jesus Christ did for you. Another thing we need to keep in mind as we go into the new year with what Jesus Christ has told us here is that when he says, I'm the way, the truth, and life, no one comes to the Father except through me. It's offering comfort for troubled souls. J.C. Ryle says this, Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the only sure medicine for troubled souls. Because as the way of God, He came to those who were broken. He came to those whose bodies were bent. He came to those who were sinners and needed grace. And he healed them of their sin. And he healed them of their guilt. That's why we need to have some confidence in what Jesus Christ is, was, and will be. So you want to know Jesus? He's the God man. So you want to know Jesus? Yes, he's exclusive. But this Jesus is the way to God, and that should give us a holy confidence that what we believe is true. So Christian, what do you believe? Repeat after me. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let's pray. Our Lord and our God, in this world in which our beliefs are challenged, help us to see honestly what Jesus said. A Jesus who lived in a multi
multicultural world with many religions, but yet that didn't stop him from saying, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Help our hearts to rest in it by the supernatural work of the Spirit, but also the facts of what history and revelation have taught us. Be with us.